Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to throw out elements within a section to create a dynamic scrolling effect in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so uh, the first thing we need to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. We're going to give this page a name. You can name it whatever you want. So I'm just going to give it a name of maybe say tutorial. But uh, this can also be applied to an existing page. So I'm going to go ahead now and give this a name. Use Divi Builder. So now that uh, the builder has been loaded, I'm going to click here on start building. All right, so now that the builder has been loaded, the next step here is to add our column structure and I'm going to add three equal columns. Now, before I can add any modules in these columns, I'm going to come over here to my row settings. And in here, I am going to go to design, sizing, and just make sure that this is set to one on the gutter width. And over here for the width, this needs to be 100%. And same thing needs to be applied here. Okay, so make sure that the width and the maximum width is set to 100%. Once you've done that, hit save. And then the next step now, in fact, I should have stayed on that. We need to go into our columns. So I want to start here with column one. So here with the column one settings, I just need to go into design and set our padding. So I want to come over here to spacing. And our top padding here is going to be 10BW. And make sure the bottom one here is also set to 5VW. And by the way, if you want to follow along step by step with the exact same sizes, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we've set this, the next step now is to open the settings for column two and add a Z index of 12. Okay. So to go to our column two settings, all we have to do is to just click here on this little arrow here on the top. To go back a little bit, click on the gear icon for column two, click advanced, and then we're going to come over here to position and Z index here needs to be set to 12. All right. So now that we're done with this, I'm just going to save and save one more time. So the next step now is to add floating images to our left and right columns. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my image module. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to come over here and just click anywhere on this image and add an image. So I already have images here in my media library, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. But if you want to use your own images, you can see here 200 by 200 is the size that we need to use here. So I'm going to click upload an image. Now I'm going to go into the design tab and update some uh, settings for my image. So I'm going to click here on sizing and over here for my width, I'm going to set this to 200 pixels. For our module alignment, I'm going to align this to the right. And then for the blur, now this is going to be over here on my filters. And I'm going to look for my blur and set it at two pixels. And then I'm going to come all the way down here to transform. So this time I need transform translate. And the values that I need are going to be 58, minus 58 and 63. So... First of all, you want to break this chain and uh, add your value over here. And this is going to be minus 58. And on the bottom here, we're going to set this to 63. All right. So that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save that. And then I'm also going to add another image to this column here. So I'm going to click on this plus button and search for my image module and select it. So I'm going to come over here and add my second image. So the image I'm going to go with is this one here. And again, our size is going to be a 692 by 1180. Click upload an image. Next, I'm going to come over here to design sizing. Just like what we did before, we're going to set our width at 200. And then I'm going to come over here to advanced position. So our position here is going to be fixed. And make sure that uh, the um, location here is on the top left. Now let's set our offset and this is going to be 7%. And over here for the horizontal one, it's going to be 5%. So moving on, let's add another image. So I'm going to save that. Okay, so moving on, we need to add another image. So I'm going to come over here, click on this plus button, search for my image module and select it. 
So again, we're going to use an image that I already have in my media library. So this is the image I'm going to go with. So I'm going to select it. And the size is going to be 800 by 800 for this third image. I'm going to upload an image. So now that my image has been added, I need to make a few adjustments as well. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. And uh, I am going to set my width at 300 pixels. And for my module alignment, this is going to be to the right. And then I also need to add my transform translate. So I'm going to scroll down here to transform. Make sure I'm on the right tab here. Break the chain. And I'm going to set this to 179. And then on the bottom here, we're going to set it at 128. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. Let's save. And the next step now is to come over here to the third column. And uh, we're also going to add our images. So I'm going to search for my image module here and select it. And again, clicking in here, we are going to search for our image. And the image I'm going to go with is this one here. Upload an image. Now let's head over to our design tab, sizing, and make sure this is set to 200 pixels. And for the module alignment, we're going to set this to left. And we also need to add a blur to this. So we're going to come over here to our filters and set our blur to four pixels. And then we're going to go into transform translate. Click here on the second tab, break the chain. And we're going to set this to minus nine. And then over here on X, on the X axis, we're going to set this to a minus 30. Okay, so now that we've added our image, let's move on and add our second one over here to the right column. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my image module. Select, select it. And then I'm going to choose the image. And the image I'm going to go with is this one here. Upload an image. And the process is the same. We still need to go in here and make our adjustments. So over here, we're going to set our width to 200. And we're also going to set our position to fixed. So I'm going to come over here to the third tab and click on position. Make sure you choose fixed. And this time the position is going to be on the bottom right. So making sure I select bottom right. I'm also going to set my offset and it's going to be 7% and 5%. And let's save this. Okay, so moving on, we are also going to add another one. And it needs to be behind this one here. So let's search for our image module. Select it. And then I'm also going to use an image that's already in my library. So we're going to go with this one here. Upload an image. Design. And let's start with our sizing. So here on the width, we're going to set this to 300. For our module alignment, we're going to align this to the left. And then we're going to go to our transform translate. Make sure you choose the right tab, break the chain, and we're going to set this to 62. And for the Y, I mean for the X, it's going to be minus 122. So pretty much we've added all our images here. We're going to save. All right, so the next step now is to add a blurb onto column two. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, and uh, we're going to search for our blurb. In fact, it's right here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Okay, so our blurb has been loaded up now. So uh, we just need to give it a title and some description. So let's go ahead and do that. So for my title, I'm just going to call this, let's go with uh, Sweet Deal. And of course, we're going with Sweet Deal here because we have sweets all over the place. <laughs> all right, so uh, for the paragraph text, I mean, I'm just going to go with uh, this basic text, but I'm just going to you know, remove some of it because it's a bit too much for my dummy text here. And uh, we also need to add a link in here. So I'm just going to come over here to my text side and let's add our link. So it's going to look something like that. Now we're going to add an image to our blurb. So I'm going to come over here to our image. And uh, the image I'm going to use is this one right here. And the size is 1155 by 980. Click upload an image. And now you can see my image has been added. Now let's add our background. In fact, we need to do a bit of styling here. So we got over here on the background, we are going to set this background to white. And then over here on the design, we're going to go to text. And for our text alignment, we're just going to center everything. Now with that centered, we also need to give this a font. So in fact, let's go to, to our title font. And uh, the one we're going to use is called Concept One. So let's search for it here. It's a free font, by the way. And here it is. I'm going to select it. So that's going to be our font. And uh, while we're here, we might as well add our color, which I'll add by clicking here on this eyedropper tool. 
and just pasting my color like that. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so with that, we're going to add our size. So I'm going to scroll down here and this size is going to be 50 pixels. There we go. So we want it nice and big. And then um, our body font is going to be the same as well. I'm going to come over here and set this to constant one. So this time I don't have to search for it because I've used it already. So it needs to, so it's right here. Okay, on my drop down. There we go. The next step now is to add our size, which is going to be 20 pixels. And we also need to adjust our line height. So we're going to come over here and set it at 1.8. So I'm just going to nudge this a little bit so that it's easier to read. So next we need to adjust the link font. So to adjust the link font, you want to come over here to this second tab. And for the link font, we are going to make it all caps. And we can also add a link color here. If you want, you can leave it as it is. But uh, if you want to go in and give it a specific color, you can just click here on this eyedropper tool and paste your color like that. Right, so with that color selected, you can also adjust the link text size, set this to 20. So it's nice and big. And then uh, let's head over here to our letter spacing. And here we're gonna set it to five pixels. And then our width is going to be 400. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing and set our width here to 400. Right, so moving on, we're also going to add padding around it. So I'm gonna scroll down here to spacing and let's add a padding of 30 pixels all around. Okay, so now that I've added 30 here, I can, I can just activate my chain so the value can be applied pretty much across everything. Okay, so now that I've added this and we've added all the settings that we need to add in here, the next step now is to add our rounded corners and add a shadow. So I'm going to come over here to border and for our rounded corners, I'm going to set this to 10. And this is going to be applied all around because my chain here has been activated. Now I know you can't really see what's happening here. And that's because we have a white background and we also have a background here that's also white. So in order for us to make this look much better, we need to choose our shadow by coming over here to box shadow. And this is the shadow that we're gonna go with. And now you can see it really stands out. And we also need to reduce the intensity of the blur strength here. So let's set this to 80 pixels. And you can see now that's looking much, much better. So finally, we need to give this blurb a fixed position. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced position. And let's change this to fixed. And we want this middle center. So now that we've added all this, I'm gonna save this. So as you can see, this design here is pretty much covering this space here. So let's add a dummy section for the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna click here on, uh, in fact, let me just scroll until I see all my uh, trolls. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and we're gonna add a regular section. I'm just going to close this for now. And that section that we've just created, we can give it a background color. Now, right now, I can't really see where it is. So I'm going to click here on wireframe view. And here it is. So I'm just going to go in and give this a background color. Come over here to background. And I'm going to add my color. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So now that I've added the color, I may also want to add a few more things. So let's give this a bit of height. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing. And for the height here, I'm going to set this to 100 VH. Okay, so now that we've created this, I'm just going to save this. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and drag this one here to the top so that our main design that we've been working on is here in the middle. So over here on the top, you can add is uh, whatever content that you need to do, I mean, to add to it. And also here on the bottom section, you can also do the same. Now let's switch over here to the front. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do here is to add some parallax. So you can see here my bottom section has been added and my top section has been added as well. So let's go back over here and uh, for our final touches, we're just going to go in and add our parallax. Right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to click this gear icon, background, and we're going to add a background image. So I'm going to click here to add my background image. And the image I'm going to go with is this one here. Now make sure this image is nice and big because uh, if you use a small one, it doesn't get the desired effect. So here we're using 2560 by 1453. I'm going to click upload an image. So now my image has been added. In fact, you know what? We might as well add our parallax while we're here. So I'm going to say use parallax. 
And the parallax I'm going to use is true parallax. So now that we have this set, the next step now is to go to the advanced tab. And then we're going to come over here to visibility. And for our vertical overflow, set this to hidden. And vertical overflow, I'm going to set this to hidden as well. And then for the Z index, we're going to get it by coming over here to our position. And we're going to set this to minus one. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. We're going to save this. And now let's take a look at our final design and see what it looks like. All right. So uh, as you can see uh, here, we have pretty much our dummy text. So you can add whatever you want here. But as I scroll here, you can see now our animation is really working. And uh, we see a lot of movement here. And our parallax is also working. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.